Egypt yesterday witnessed its strongest protest in probably four decades. I was living in Egypt in 2011 when the revolution happened. I was really moved by the risks that I saw everyday citizens take to stand up to authority and to document abuses by the authority. I certainly struggled with guilt about leaving and this question of how can I, from the sidelines, support the incredible activism and not, not just leave and, and never look back. At the Human Rights Investigations Lab, we train students to comb through social media and other publicly accessible platforms on the internet to see if they can find evidence related to human rights abuses and to war crimes that are happening around the world. You'd be amazed how often videos are circulated and you're being told that this is actually Syria today, when maybe it came from Ethiopia five years ago. So a big piece of what our students are doing is really fact-checking. This is Smart News Agency. They depend on citizens using their cell phones to go out and document what is going on in Syria. This appears to be the bombing of an aid convoy. Whenever I see cluster munitions, that is something we would be particularly interested in because those are illegal weapons in this conflict. The first thing I do is I look at when it was published and I try to figure out if that's the, really the first time it was uploaded onto the internet. Turns out this video was uploaded for the first time here on YouTube on August 3rd. The other thing I start doing is translating and trying to figure out as much detail as possible. They claim that this attack happened towards the western entrance of this city. I'm going to go to satellite imagery now and start looking at the roads that are leading um, from El Atarib west. So a lot of what you'll find, I do, well, a lot of what I do is just like opening. When we do training for digital verification, uh, a lot of people come along and think yeah. you know, there's a silver bullet for verification, and actually there's not. Probably the trickiest part of the whole verification techniques we use is trying to work out exactly where a photograph or video was actually taken or captured or filmed. Uh, but often it's the most important thing we can do. So the goal is to make sure that this video is saved and that we analyze as much information as possible from this video so that hopefully it can be used in a legal investigation or one day in a case seeking legal accountability for this attack. To be able to have the people who are already there sending information out, either through videos that they post to YouTube or videos that they post to Facebook, that means we're hearing stories we've never actually heard before and wouldn't have otherwise. One group that we're working with is the Syrian Archive. Let's see if we get them the first try. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Hi. We have about 600 videos only related to chemical weapons attacks, mm -hmm. uh, but they are not analyzed. What you are doing is the most important, is analyzing and doing open source investigations, which we really don't have the capacity to do right now. So I've gone back to work on one of the convoy videos. I'm having a really hard time really geolocating it, partly because it's on just a big rural road. Uh, just send me the materials and okay. we can work on it together. Okay. Thank you so much, Hadi. I really appreciate this. Welcome. We all really love working on your projects. They give us a lot of meaning in our life. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. Thank you guys so much. I have probably found some coordinates that are where the bombing for those trucks took place on August 3rd, 2016. There's this really interesting um, moment of excitement when you think you've really found it. And there's a part of me that is absolutely yearning for a lot more accountability. 
and waiting to see what happens with this information. If you're going after the president of a country or a commanding general, the last thing you want is these cases falling apart. Our students go through the painstaking work of verifying so that courts and human rights investigators knew how much they could rely on that information and ultimately get those stories out to the world. What I hope for Andrea and for any of the students to take with them is just the skills that they've gained, that they're able to disseminate that through work that they do for better social good. The students who come out of this are going to be part of a pipeline that's never really existed before. And the potential for them to help various fields of practice is enormous. It's actually with this work that I've kind of gotten rid of a lot of that guilt. This work um, allows me to feel like I can directly give something back to um, the activists who take so much risk to document these human rights violations.